This looks like the monitor. And here's the PC with some instructions. A DVI cable, which is nice. <laughs> Loose power cables, all right? One for the monitor, one for the PC. Wi-Fi adapter, and you get a mouse keyboard combo. This is even a name brand, HP. Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo, Hobo Technos, Technos Parade Review. No, this isn't actually clickbait. You can, in fact, buy a modern 64-bit quad-core desktop computer with LCD monitor, keyboard, and mouse for only 125 bucks. It also includes Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, it comes preloaded with Windows 10 Professional, meaning it can run virtually any PC software, including most games. Now, if this sounds too good to be true, it's not, because I bought one myself to ask one simple question. Is it any good? Let's find out. All right, so what's the catch? First, these aren't brand new PCs, but ones that have been refreshed by qualified Microsoft authorized refurbishers. These aren't fly-by-night companies, but ones that actually have a proven track record of professionally refurbishing Windows PCs. Being in this program allows them to install fresh new copies of Windows at virtually no cost, which is one reason why these are so inexpensive. These PCs originally started life as new computers that were likely used in a corporate environment. When a business gets new PCs, for example, to upgrade to Windows 11, the old PCs get recycled to refurbishers that then clean them up and flip them for resale in bulk. What this means for you is that you get what looks like a brand new, totally clean and fully functioning computer for pennies on the dollar. In most cases, you won't even know the parts were used because they're clean, tested, hard drives are wiped, and anything broken has been replaced. The PC I bought also includes a refurbished monitor of the same brand. It also includes a new keyboard and a new mouse, and it has a full copy of Windows 10 Professional pre-installed in that $125 price. Amazon Refurbished does provide a 90-day warranty, and some of these companies actually bump that warranty up to a full year. So before we take a look at this PC in detail, you may ask why you even need one to begin with. In 2024, there are still many reasons to own a desktop PC. While it's technically feasible to do most things online with a modern cell phone, there's still a lot of software out there that requires a PC or a Mac to run. Many tasks are simply easier to do on a big screen with a full-size keyboard and mouse. And if you type a lot like I do, need to multitask, or use spreadsheets, you know exactly what I mean. Yeah, you can use a laptop, but even the cheapest Windows laptops start around 350 bucks, and they're honestly garbage. They almost always have horrible screens and mushy keyboards and are slow as molasses for any real task work. Now let's not even go into Apple products because we all know what those cost. Even in the used market, it's pretty crazy. So while this $125 PC I'm about to show you isn't a powerhouse by any means, it's far better than that cheap $350 laptop and it's almost as portable. These are compact or flat top horizontal cases that can also be ran in the vertical. They do include a DVD drive, so you can install software from CDs or DVDs as well as watch DVD movies. Now there's no floppy drive, but nobody uses those anymore anyway. They do support booting from a flash drive. The included monitor in this case is a 19 inch monitor, which happens to be just the right size to stick on top of the case and takes up very little space. Now, if you're saying, well, laptops have batteries and you can use them anywhere, my answer to that is, I have dozens of reviews on small micro power stations that will run this PC probably a lot longer than your cheap laptop battery. All right, now let's get on with the review, starting with the basic specs of this PC. This model is the Dell Optiplex 7010 with an Intel quad-core i5-3450 processor. Let's hold on here for a second. Professor Hobo here with an update about the specifications of this PC. It seems they misrepresented the specifications of this computer and in fact have a faster, better, newer processor inside of it than what is advertised. What's actually in there is a sixth generation Core i5 processor. It's actually a member of the Skylake family, which was one of the better processors of its day. This is actually an i5-6500 processor with a 3.2 gigahertz base frequency and a 3.6 gigahertz boost frequency. So the actual processor in it was launched quarter three, 2015, 
and not towards the end of 2012. So this is a three-year newer processor than what they advertise in the ad. This also means the graphics on board are much better. This is Intel HD 530 graphics. So it actually supports 4K monitors at 60 hertz. So that means you can actually upgrade to a 4K monitor on this computer. All this means is that the video and graphics will look great. While I'm not a fan of processors with built-in graphics, they do keep that price down. I do have an upgrade path for better graphics planned toward the end of this video. Now this PC in particular comes with eight gigabytes of DDR3 memory, which is fine for most tasks and can be upgraded to 32 gigs. We will add additional memory to this model for 20 bucks. I mean, you can't beat that to see how much faster it gets. It also includes a 500 gig SATA hard drive, which can be upgraded later if needed. That should be plenty of space for most. Now at this price point, it also comes with a 19 inch LCD monitor. In this case, it is a Dell branded monitor, a new keyboard and mouse, and Windows 10 Pro, which is nice because Windows 10 Home sucks. Now the reason why I chose this specific PC is because it's still modern and it comes with enough power and memory to handle the majority of tasks. While it won't handle the latest Call of Duty or edit 4K videos, you can get pretty close with a few choice upgrades. What I'm gonna do first is test it as it is with a benchmark program to get a baseline, then I'll run a few popular games to see how it does. Finally, I'll upgrade the graphics and see how much improvement we get overall. So now that we have this thing unboxed, let's go ahead and take a look at it close up. We have a pretty cheap keyboard, but it is USB. It comes with a very cheap three button laser mouse, so at least no ball mouse. It comes with two power cables, and that's gonna be one for the monitor, one for the computer. It does come with a DVI cable, so this is for connecting the monitor to the PC. And finally, it comes with two little USB pieces. One of these is for Wi-Fi, and it even says on there Wi-Fi, and that's Wi-Fi AC. So this is actually really fast Wi-Fi, believe it or not. And it comes with a Bluetooth 5.1 module. So you plug them into the USB ports, which there are plenty of on this model, and it automatically gets detected by Windows and you don't really have to do anything else. So let's go ahead and put this thing together real quick so I can fire it up and we'll start our first tests. Hey, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. So I already mentioned the DVD drive on this. It's a DVD reader. You do have an audio out on the front. This is the power button. And you have a little hard drive light there. It tells you the hard drive is working. Now we got four USB ports on the front. Two of these are USB three. They're the blue ones. And I got two USB twos, which are these white ones. Flip it around and you actually have an additional four USB ports. These all look like USB threes, so that's nice. You have a pair of USB twos. Then you have a ethernet port to hook up to a LAN. You have a PS2 keyboard and mouse, which is a nice option to have. Then you have an analog RGB out, that's for old school monitors. Now this actually does have both inputs on it. It has a digital and an analog. Of course, we're gonna use the digital because that just makes sense. You have two DVI ports. So that's what we're gonna plug our current graphics cable into. You see it on the end. So you can see it kind of looks like an HDMI cable, but it's not. It's got like an angle just on one side and it's flat on the other. And it only goes in one way. And then you have an HDMI cable down there if you wanna do HDMI, and then you have another audio out cable. So those are all your inputs and outputs on the back. Last but not least, we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth USB adapters. So we'll go ahead and plug those into the faster speed USB because especially the Wi-Fi one is going to require a fast transfer rate. So we'll just plug those in to the faster USB 3 ports. So now I'm gonna power it on and I'm going to time how long it takes to go from the time I push the button until the time the Windows desktop comes up because that's gonna give us an idea of how fast this thing is to boot when we make a bunch of changes to it. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the button and we'll start the timer. Now, you have to remember this has an old school SATA hard drive in it. So you have to understand this is not like a modern computer hard drive that's really fast. Now, I am gonna let you guys know that I've already loaded all my software onto this computer and I've already tweaked it the best I can. I've pretty much canceled background tasks and done like certain things to make it a little bit faster than it would be by factory. But it still takes quite a while for this thing to boot up. Usually it's about a minute. So we're actually timing it to see how long it's gonna to take to go all the way to the desktop. We're coming up on 45 seconds. 
The hard drive is the slowest part of this computer. I can tell you in advance, that's always the bottleneck on these cheaper computers is usually the hard drive. Hopefully it's not doing an update because that would ruin the whole startup routine. Okay, there we go. It was a minute 28. So the software this comes with is all on the left side and what I put in is on the right side. I have the 3D Mark demo, which is gonna tell us how fast this computer is compared to other computers. I have Grand Theft Auto V, which is a popular game. Minecraft, again, a super popular game. Elder Scrolls Skyrim, again, super popular game. I picked the, th the three basically most popular games that would still run on this computer. Oh, I also need to tell you that I did do all the software, firmware, and Windows updates on this. I've spent a couple of days actually preparing this computer for this video. Let me break in here for a moment. I know that when you're looking at a computer monitor, especially a low refresh rate monitor like these, on a camera that's doing 60 frames, and this is doing 60 frames, there might be a little weirdness in what it looks like. Now, I'm gonna tell you the monitor looks perfectly fine to me, but on the camera, you're gonna see some weird lines. There's nothing wrong with this monitor. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is run what's called 3D Mark. And this is going to allow us to tell you how fast the computer is compared to other computers. Okay, here in 3D Mark, we're just gonna choose the default settings. So this is just a demo, so you can't really pick anything else anyway. All right, we just click on Run, and it will run through a full screen benchmark. And you might ask, why am I not just recording the screen? Because if I'm recording the screen, that actually makes a major impact on the graphics. So I don't wanna try to record the screen for you guys and mess up this test. I'm gonna just shoot the monitor with the camera. I know it's kinda old school but it gets the job done. Okay, so this is a demo it's doing. You can see the frame rate is absolutely horrendous. It's two frames per second. So the result is going to probably be somewhat poor. You have to remember that the graphics on this CPU aren't that great. They're basic graphics for basic tasks. And for gaming with a lot of graphics like this, it's not gonna be that good. But let's see what the result is. Maybe we'll be surprised. You can see this room's pretty cool. They got all kinds of high polygon count items in here that is going to stress the GPU. You can see this one here is more of like a first person view. You're walking around and checking all these like swords and ancient artifacts and stuff. Yeah, and the frame rate's down to 1.4. That is ridiculously low. Now the third test in the demo is a CPU test. So what it does is it build these sort of crystalline structures, you'll see. What that does is that stresses the CPU this time. So it's not really testing the graphics as much as it is testing the CPU. So you can see the frame rate's actually a lot higher. And here's our result, 401. So it says good, and it's rating us in the top end comparison with other people that have the same hardware. So my score is 401, the average is 399, and the best ever in the world was 465. That's this graphics with this amount of memory and this CPU. So actually a pretty good score and it says it's a decent setup. It's not great, but it's good. So one of the things a lot of people don't know is that there's a built-in recording software, frame rate, tester, everything built into Windows 10 and Windows 11. All you have to do is hold down the Windows key on your keyboard, which is the one down here, and hit the letter G. I have it already set up to do a frames per second monitor over here in the corner. So you can have it do all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna turn off the rest of this so we have just the frames per second counter over here. So while we're running a game, we can see how much memory it's taken, what CPU load and RAM and graphics. So that way we can compare when we make upgrades to this, um, is it getting better or worse? So the first test is gonna be Grand Theft Auto V. I'm gonna load that up and let it run for a few seconds in the beginning, we'll see what frame rate we get. Okay, see right here at the intro, we're doing 36 frames per second. It's using 42% CPU, 100% GPU, and 82% of our RAM. So 35, 36 frames per second at the beginning of the game, that gives us a good baseline. Now let's load up Minecraft, which is one of my personal favorite games. I installed a whole bunch of mods and make a, a lot of fun. Uh, beer crafting and crazy things like that, all kinds of new monsters in the game. The basic game's kind of boring, but I do like a modded Minecraft. So let's go ahead and launch Minecraft and we'll see what kind of frame rate we get inside. Now I'm doing all default settings in all these games. I'm just loading them up and letting them do whatever they do without changing anything to give you an idea of just how fast they run without making any modifications. 
Also need to let you know, there are speakers built into this monitor, but it sounds worse than a cell phone. So I have a solution for that when we get to the upgrade section of this video. Okay, we're gonna do a single player game. And we'll just use this current world. Just go right in there, it's already generated. Okay, what we're gonna do is let this render the world. I'm gonna spin around here. So it loads the world in the background, basically loads it in the memory, because until then the frame rate's pretty bad. Okay, it looks like it's clearing up a little bit. And we'll go ahead and just face this lake. And we'll just let this sit here for a moment and see what kind of frame rate we get. Okay, over here it says 60 frames per second. Let me show you how smooth it is. I mean, this is very, very smooth and very, very playable. Of course, it stutters a little bit once you get to load a new section of the map. But this is totally playable, nice and smooth. And this is on a $125 computer, which is amazing. Like I said, it'll stop and stutter a little bit. Oh, collect some chicken eggs. We can punch these chickens. Yeah, you can actually kill the chickens and, and cook, cook the meat. See, it says new recipe unlocked. I can actually make some chicken cook up some chicken and uh, have myself a nice meal. And I can go fishing and do all kinds of fun stuff in this game. And you can see the frame rate is really good. We're running around and it's like 57, 58, 59, 60. It doesn't get any smoother than that. Now, let's go into the options, video settings. Now this is my resolution 1600 by 900, which is the default for this monitor. I do have the graphics pretty much turned up. It's I have V-Sync turned off, so it's not limiting it by sync rate. Cloud's fancy. Now, this was all auto-detected, and I didn't change anything, except the V-Sync. I turned that off, because you can't test graphics with V-Sync on. But even with the maximum settings, Minecraft is nice and smooth. So this next game we're going to test out is Elder Scrolls Skyrim. This is a game that came out... Oh, 14 years ago, something like that. This is the updated version, so it has new graphics in it. This game is on my top 10 favorites of all time, so I played the crap out of this way too many hours. Now, it says it automatically set the graphics for low quality, so we're just going to roll with that because that's what it, it automatically set it to. Let's go ahead and hit play. Now, this game has fantastic sound and music. You can't really hear it out of these squeaky little speakers in this monitor, but they're there. This game's really cool. You get to fight dragons, and you get special powers that allow you to do cool things. They call them shouts. So you basically yell a certain phrase, and it will allow you to like fly, or it'll allow you to like shoot lightning, or do like all kinds of cool stuff in the game. It's a role-playing game where you can play as a barbarian, or a mage, or an archer, or stuff like that. It's kind of D&D-based, but it's not really D&D roles. Okay, we're going to base the frame rate on this intro because the intro is rendered in game. And we'll just look forward because we can look around here. You can see you're on this cart as a prisoner with these other guys. You're basically going to the chopping block to be uh, beheaded. So you're going, you're pretty much going to your death in the beginning of the game. So we'll go ahead and look forward. See, after the word Skyrim is when we'll check the frame rate. So it's at 20 frames per second which is just barely playable. It's not really... Uh, this isn't a game you want to really play at 20 frames per second uh, because there's a lot of action, a lot of monsters and stuff come running at you, a lot of really nice graphics. Uh, and on low, you're going to be missing out a little bit. It, yeah, you could play it at 18, 19, 20 frames, but it's not going to be nearly as pleasant if you could crank up the graphics on a better computer. So... Anyway, that's where we're at. We'll just call it, it says 1920. We'll call it 1920 for this section of the game. Now we're at the upgrade section. For a lousy 20 bucks, I can double the amount of memory in this computer. So this is another eight gigs, two four gig sticks. But before we put the memory in, I am going to do a simple upgrade that costs $10 that I think is an absolute requirement for this system. And that's one of these cheap $10 sound bars. Now, this is just a single crappy little speaker with a volume knob, and it is actually USB powered. So you plug it into one of your USB ports to power it, and then you plug this into your audio port, either your headphones in the front or in the back. Now, 
This is going to make a night and day difference with your experience on this computer because while you can kind of hear audio, if you watch YouTube and you watch Hobo Tech, you can't listen to squeaky little speakers, right? You're gonna miss all that cool music I put in for the time lapses. This is a well worth $10 upgrade. So from this point forward, we're gonna go ahead and plug this bar in and we're gonna hear the difference when I, especially when I play that Skyrim game, that has really excellent music. They have real excellent music in that game. And you really wanna be able to crank it up with this. So we'll install this out with the memory in because really you just plug two things in and it's good to go. 20 minutes later. Okay, change of plans. I was originally going to upgrade the memory of this computer. I was gonna double the memory and then do all the same tests you just saw over again. But the problem is, is I have memory sticks from two other computers of the same era, basically within a couple of years of each other, four gigabyte sticks, DDR3 at the same speed, but they don't work in this computer. It just won't even boot up even with just one of these sticks. And so I'm just gonna skip that whole part of upgrading the memory. Okay, I figure out after I finish this review the reason for the memory incompatibility. I was not using low voltage memory, which is what this motherboard requires. So I will post the link in the description of this video to the actual memory that you need. And I have some on order, and I will be upgrading my own with this same memory. But that's fine, we're gonna move on to the next upgrade. And that is going to be a graphics upgrade. Yes, we're gonna go ahead and install this Gigabyte GeForce GT 1030. Now, why this specific card? Well, these motherboards really can't support heavy duty graphics. It has a tiny little power supply. So usually the higher end graphics card requires a plug from the power supply of the run. This one doesn't. It fits in the very limited space. We have this little tiny slot right here to fit a graphics card. And you can tell this isn't a very tall computer. So the important feature of this one, low profile. So this is a low profile graphics card. It's a two gig. I can guarantee you it's going to greatly accelerate all those numbers that we saw before. So even without an actual memory upgrade, the graphics upgrade will make a big difference. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in now. I'm gonna show you just how simple it is. Again, this doesn't require any tools. Here's what the graphics card looks like out of the box. It's a just a tiny little thing with a little fan on it and a little heat sink. There are no power connectors or anything on it. You just plug it in and it works. It does have an HDMI output and a DVI output. So you're gonna need one of those cables to go to this monitor, which is not included. So you have to purchase that separately. I have a solution for this. I thought I had a cable for this, but I don't. What I do have is an HDMI cable. So I'm gonna have to use a different monitor, but. So first make sure it's unplugged. This little thing here is where you're putting the graphics card, right in these slots. So you just lift up this, this is a toolless system. It lifts right up and you just stick the card in. Now I already took the little piece out that normally blocks that, I don't know where I put it. I took it out earlier when I did testing to make sure this card works and of course it does work. Make sure you discharge static electricity on something before you actually work on it and it is unplugged. So you just stick it in the blue slot you can see through that crack right in here. Once it's in there, just like the memory, push straight down, it clicks in, and it's gonna be level right here. You're gonna see this is gonna be flush, so it shouldn't be sticking up at all. Once it's flush, it's all the way in. You don't want it to be part of the way in or it'll crash the computer. Just flip this back over, push it down. That's literally all there is to upgrading. Okay, here's an important step. Because we're no longer using the onboard graphics, we're now gonna use the graphics coming out of here. So you do need to unplug that cable because if you leave it plugged in, it's gonna run this graphics card. You don't want it to run that one, you want it to run this one. So let's go get my other monitor that'll allow me to hook to this since I don't have the proper cable on hand. Okay, here's my new monitor. And no, I'm not kidding. This is actually a portable 4K monitor. So this does 4K graphics. This monitor by itself is about 200 bucks. So I don't expect anyone to get this. I will put a link in the description of the video if you do want to upgrade to it. It's night and day when it comes to clarity and color and everything else. It's USB powered, which is really neat. And you set it up just like this and it will stand on its own just like that. Since it's USB powered, all I have to do is hook up to the USB port here and turn on. Now, the reason why I'm using this monitor is because I have the a regular HDMI cable. I have like 50 of these laying around. I don't have the cable I need to run to that Dell monitor. It's just, I have it on order. I don't want to put this video off any longer, so I'm just going to do this. So HDMI plugs right into the side. The other side plugs in to the HDMI down here on the new graphics card. Goes in 
and that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to get a USB cable to power that. So it doesn't matter which port you use, it's a USB-C. You guys wouldn't know what USB-C is. The other side can be power delivery or a regular USB-A. This, this monitor only pulls eight watts, so you can plug it into literally anything. I'm just gonna plug it into one of these USB ports in the back. Now the only issue is, it's kind of hard to record a monitor at an angle like this. So I do want to let you know this graphics card costs around 110 bucks. Now it does vary a slight a bit. I think I paid a little bit more than that, but now the price has come way down. I'll put the link in the description of this video. Just like this computer itself, the price of that product is going to vary depending on the seller. So here we are at the desktop. Let's just go ahead and go right to 3D Mark, just like we did before. I'm not gonna show you the whole process, I'm just gonna show you the results. So let's go ahead and do 3D Mark. Wow, if you actually look at the frame rate here, it's 6.6, 6.7. That is a dramatic improvement over the 1.7 and 2.0. It's like triple. Now I have to guess that the score is gonna be probably two or three times what it was for the built-in graphics. So now it's gonna go ahead and do the second test. And here we have the second demo. The frame rate is again a lot higher. We're seeing four, four and a half. There, I turned the lights off in the room. You can actually see the graphics are much, much better than they were on the other monitor. There you go, once the camera adjusts, it looks fantastic. You can see it, it's actually running even faster on the CPU test. Okay, here's the result, 1184. So that's my score. The average is 1202, so we're, we're way up there. So look at the graphics and CPU score compared to before. So there's the difference. So the added graphics card gives you almost 1200 compared to 400 or three times faster. And the graphics score is 1068, and on the old one, it was only 355. CPU score, 2800. And it's actually improved the CPU just a little bit. I thought it was running a little bit faster. And maybe because the graphics don't have to gobble up the CPU power. That is a dramatic improvement. Okay, GTA 5 frames per second, 63. So that's quite a bump up from before. So, okay, we have Minecraft running. We have it in the same spot as we had last time. And check out the frames per second. 118 frames a second. That's like twice as fast as it was before. Okay, now when we launch Skyrim, it's going to redetect video hardware since we changed the video card. And now it's set for ultra quality. So before it said low, now it's gonna let us play it on ultra. So since we just go with the default settings, let's go ahead and play and see what kind of frame rate we get. And I want you to hear this fantastic music coming through this sound bar. <laughs> Okay, we are on ultra settings now, and we're doing 30, 31 frames per second. So that is impressive. This is maxed out graphics. I turned the lights off so you can get a better idea what the game looks like with the graphics cranked up. You know, I have to admit, I'm really shocked on just how fast this thing gets with just a few minor upgrades. Yeah, I pretty much doubled the price of the PC doing it, but we're still under 200 bucks with all the upgrades, and the result is a PC that can handle some pretty serious gaming, and it's actually quite snappy when it comes to programs. The major bottleneck is that clunky 500 gigabyte hard drive. It seems like it's always running. And I bet if I swapped out that hard drive for an SSD, this little box would scream even with only eight gigs of memory. Now this goes to show you that just because you're old, doesn't mean you're dead. Now, while there are some really amazing high-end processors out there, you have to realize that most of the software on the market today is far behind today's monster processing power. A lot of stuff runs just fine on 10-year-old hardware, as we've seen, and as long as you have half-decent graphics and memory, you're usually pretty good. A quad-core 3.6 gigahertz processor is generally good enough for anything short of high-end gaming or video editing. Now, if you're not a serious gamer and you just tinker with photo and video editing and want a much better experience online than a tablet or a laptop, 
This is actually a real eye-opener and a huge value when it seems like everything is just getting more expensive. They're also really easy to upgrade. As you can see, I didn't even use a single tool this entire time. It's so easy, even a caveman can do it. Now, I'd totally buy one of these PCs as a gift to anybody that wants or needs a computer because at 125 bucks, that's really less than the cost of a decent night out with the family. So maybe instead of buying dinner for your mom on Mother's Day, get her a PC. Kids need a computer for school? Bam. If they break it, so what? With the included DVD player and HDMI output, you would even make a great entertainment center PC for your TV. The applications are really endless at this price. Now on a final note about that price, I've been calling this the $125 PC because that's what I paid for it from Amazon Refurbished just a few months ago. And I will show you up on screen that I did actually buy it for that price. But this particular model's price varies depending on which reseller that day has the buy box. That's basically whoever shows up on the Amazon page. There might be a hundred sellers selling this computer, but whoever gets the buy box is the only one you see. That one's not always the one with the lowest price. Now I've seen this same PC go for as low as 121 bucks or as much as 139 bucks. There is a lot of competition with this model. I did purchase mine from the seller, United PC Tech, and if you get it from the same seller, it should be identical or very close to this model. Now I know some other sellers may offer the same product in a different Dell case. They may include a different brand monitor, or who knows what else they may or may not include that might be different than this. Since this stuff is refurbished and limited to product in hand, what they sell over time is likely to change. So if you're interested, I will put a link to this PC along with links to all the upgrades listed in the description of this video below. I'll also put the main link here at the bottom of the screen along with a QR code that you can scan if you're watching me on TV. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. RV Golf Guy, Brian Blue, Bruce Johnson, Jason Soroka, Mark Steve Eisenberg.